Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the CryptoQ YouTube channel. And today we are going to be talking about the markets, what is upcoming here soon. Mind you, we're talking about this upcoming week, really about an event happening in about two days, which if you are going to be trading, investing, it's something to be at least mindful of. And I'm personally going to be watching it as I have been for months now. So I've got trading view up here. We're actually going to talk about a couple stocks and some cryptos, and then I'm going to talk about mainly what I am inferring to, which you might already know. Now, FedEx is what we have put up here on their daily chart, and we can see that they dropped significantly uh, based off some guidance down 21%, which for FedEx to drop that amount, uh, be wary of what's coming soon. Uh, that's... I'm personally still macro bearish by a long shot. And I mean, I mean that personally, I, I mean, how things are looking right now, I don't foresee why we can't go to pre COVID levels on the SPY. Uh, now, of course things can change, but that's what I'm estimating. And I wrote a thread on Twitter in regards to Nvidia. Now that the actual merge went through, and you will likely see some dumping uh, of GPUs. And I was kind of talking about shorting NVIDIA. My only thing I'm kind of concerned about is one, yes, of course, they have other revenue streams beyond just the crypto miners. And then also they were nearing the 200 day MA. And it pretty much just bounced right off it on the weekly chart. And you can actually go back and you can see times where it has bounced off it. Now, I mean, this was 2019. So things are a little different. And so you can go back and you can check it out if you'd like to. Now, in regards to the Bitcoin, Ethereum, your big kind of majors, I talked about this earlier in the week. Uh, they are being hit right now. And we'll have to see how they play out. Because in all honesty, we're getting nearing these levels where it typically might bottom out. Now, we are on a weekly chart. The weekly will close here in a few hours. Probably by the time this video goes live, it'll be nearing close or right at close. So I'm hoping, as it has in the past, that on our very higher time frames, monthly, quarterly, etc., that we close above the previous cycle high, sitting at about 19,800s. Right now we are sitting below it. We might close the weekly above it. But who's to say this next week we don't see it drop down to the lows? That is something that can happen uh, for certain. Now, if it closes pretty rough on the 12 hourly, you could see it go back and retest the 19K area. And I wouldn't be surprised to see it. Ethereum. Well, I mean, it's just getting crushed post-merge. <laughs> I mean, that's frankly... It can't reclaim the 200 and it's taken a massive, in this perspective, 4.6% in 12 hours, sitting at 1367. And I mean, yeah, you've got some support here, you could say, going back to July of 22. But what's to say we don't see it work its way down and actually hit about 1268 before a bounce? Something to be mindful of because you've got this area. Now, do I think we immediately see it go down to these 1,000 and the true lows, especially on a weekly chart? I It's hard to say because with the upcoming event, which we'll talk about, which is the Fed funds rate and the incoming rate hike, it could have a massive drawdown on the market. I've been short the market for actually quite a while going in and out of positions, but it's something to watch for. Now you can go to this website, the CME Group's website, uh, at cmegroup.com forward slash trading, forward slash interest rates, forward slash countdown to FOMC, or you can just type in uh, countdown to FOMC and you'll be, you should be able to find it. So if you want to look at it, monitor it, track it, look at the data, you can, but we're seeing two days and 20 hours before the meeting. Now, here is some nice statistics using the Fed Watch tool that you can look at. 
82% of people are expecting to write about a 75 basis point hike. 18% are going for a possible 100 basis point hike. Now, I'm not a macro expert by any means. I'm not an expert on these things. I have some knowledge of it, and I have my own takes on it, and I'm not perfect by any means, but I, I'm still in the boat of 75 and I've said this in the last video, there's a chance of a 100 basis point, which if we see a 100 basis point, I, I would think the markets would react pretty bad to that. Now you can also go in here, you can check out some further information into the meetings and their probabilities for various different hikes. Now these are in terms of basis points for the interest rates, which we are sitting at 2.25 uh, to 2.5% currently. Uh, mind you, this is a longer time horizon chart, so you can see how they've hiked, how it dropped, going into COVID, and how they've began to hike. So that's just something to be in mind of, because we're sitting about 2.25 to 2.5, and that's why you'll see, if we go back to this current, all of these are in a range of 300 to 325, which is what would be measuring at a 75 basis point hike. So keep that in mind. And you can also go back and check out their historical data if you'd like to get a inference point there. But I honestly think one interesting thing are these dot plots here where you can see for the current years what they are expecting in terms of interest rates and their target rates, I should say. Currently, you see for 2023, 3.625 has a majority share, 3.375 for the end of 2022. And for 2024, they pretty much want to see it spike up top out 23 and work its way back down uh, by 2024, 2025. That's the current estimations, and this will change quite a bit. You can go and see what their assessments are within the FOMC participants and what they're estimating on projections. So they, they've projected pretty much the same thing here. You'll go up a bit more and work its way back down in the longer time frame. So that's something to just be wary of uh, because this, in my opinion, is what the markets are really going to be reacting to in this coming week. Now, I am waiting for this to load, but they expect rate hikes for quite a while. The probabilities that they are putting to you seeing non-rate hikes and actual easing is pretty low. And it's down here. So the meeting dates you can see on the left going all the way out to the end of 2023. And how long it is to it. What percentage chances of a easing of the rates. No hiking, so staying stagnant. Or a hike. Currently it's all 100% all the way until the end of 23. I've made comments all over Twitter. Talking about where I think things are going to go. When I think things might recover. And I've said it, I still think personally, unless things change, and I'm of course monitoring my opinions on it and staying open to ideas, but I still think end of 23, going into 24, if not the end of Q1 of 2024, before things really start to get better. Now, of course, things can change. If events such as Taiwan and China, uh, China and Taiwan, I can't believe I just mixed those up. But if those two, uh, if more things develop in that aspect, um, Ukraine and Russia, etc., if things develop there and it begins to uh, become larger issues that have larger drawdown effects or impacts on various different global economies or the global economy and markets, uh, expect things to get worse. So that is uh, my general thoughts for what is going on. I just mainly wanted to touch on that because if you are holding in or if you're thinking about buying, um, I'm personally going to be waiting until that actual meeting for things. Now, we are looking at Ethereum again on the weekly. It has continued to go down from when we started this video. Do we see it bounce off this 200 day at 1278? I think there might be good odds for it. But it's something to be aware of. Because me personally, the only thing I have purchased as of recently was actually the graph. That that has been it. Because it is down 
96% from the highs. And if we go from the uh, top for the cycle, really, because this is, well, I guess if you want to count the beginning of the cycle top, you're actually down a substantial amount, 98%-ish, 96 so yes, there is downside, but it is so close to the all-time low. Um, I am a, I've been a fan of the project for a while. I've actually staked mine and delegated it, um, earning roughly 10% APR. This has been the only thing I've purchased as of recent, um, and it's more of a long-term play. I'm in no rush to get the capital out of it, and I'm going to let it sit there. And you can see, it is on a downward slope right now, even on the daily, currently down 10%. So yeah, I'm down 10% of my purchase. I'm not concerned about it because I'm going to add into that position over time. This isn't something I went all in at one go. But you can see everything is down 11, 12, 10% roughly. At least most things with a higher market cap. So with that being said, that is pretty much it. You can see Bitcoin and Ethereum right now are dropping quite rapidly. If we go over to the hourly chart, you can get a better idea of it. Currently down 1.5% in this past hourly candle. And for Ethereum, down 3%. I'm glad I sold a lot of mine higher up. Um, I will be a buyer eventually, but not at the moment. So please be careful out there. Uh, if you have... Anything you'd like to ask me, please feel free to DM me on Twitter or put it in a comment down below, and I'll catch you guys later.